Hey everybody, it's Billy with Dee's Real Estate here. And today we're gonna to be going over how much does it cost to purchase a home? So some of the myths that we run into and some of the things that we hear, especially from first time home buyers or people who haven't purchased a home in quite some time. And so we're gonna to help to dispel some of those myths, but also talk about exactly how much you're looking to come out of pocket in order to purchase a home. So one of the first things that we hear is that I need a 20% down payment. While it is preferable to have 20% down payment when you purchase a home, it's not required. Uh, Washington State does have a bond loan program. What that does is that gives you a 0% interest loan to help cover the cost of the down payment. And they'll help, typically help you out with 3% of down payment, uh, which is all you need for FHA, uh, VA loans typically. So the way that works is that uh, it does have to be repaid. It is 0% interest. And it's something Washington State does to help people get into their first homes. So with that being said, you can actually get by uh, if you qualify for the uh, Washington State Bond for Program for zero uh, dollars out of your pocket down. The next thing that we run into is the earnest money. And this is uh, some, one of those things that's a little bit tricky and a little bit tough to, to understand. So what the earnest money does is just let the seller know that you're serious about buying their home. And typically what sellers like to see is 1% of the purchase price as the earnest money. And this is the earnest money that you put down in case you decide to back out for any sort of reason very late in the process. It's something that helps the seller kind of recoup uh, time off market, that sort of thing. And typically sellers like to see 1% of the purchase price. So if we're talking about a $200,000 property, 1% of the purchase price is gonna be $2,000. And that is money that would need to be out of your pocket within two days of getting under contract on the property. The next thing is closing costs. So uh, there's a couple ways to get around closing costs. Obviously you can always pay those yourself and it does make your offer stronger as a buyer if you're covering your own closing costs. However, that's just not in the cards for some people. So there's a couple ways to get around this. Uh, one uh, is that you can increase the offer on the home to, and ask the seller to cover your closing costs. For instance, uh, on a $150,000 home, um, closing costs typically run two to three percent of the purchase price of the home. Uh, so on $150,000, you're looking at around forty-five fifty for uh, your closing costs. So on $150,000, what you can do is offer the seller $154,450 and then ask them to cover your closing costs. So they still net the same amount of money, but you're getting your closing costs covered. And that is rolled into the loan that's financed. So you're essentially financing your closing cost over the next 30 years. However, it is a good tactic to help you be able to purchase your first home without having to come out of pocket for very much money. So in theory, we can actually get you uh, set up with zero out of pocket expense for your closing costs as well. Uh, another thing that's not quite understood is how we as the buyer's agents get paid for helping you. So unlike most other professions, uh, real estate agents, as a buyer's agent, uh, you as the buyer don't pay us anything for our services. It's one of the few times uh, in history where you can actually have a professional, licensed, trained professional help you out through something without you having to pay them or pay them up front. And the way we get paid is that the seller of the property actually pays the listing agent a commission and there's agreements between the buyer's agent and the listing agent that that listing agent will split a portion of their listing commission with uh, the buyer's agent. So zero dollars out of your pocket for agent services as well. So the next thing we're looking at uh, is the inspection and the appraisal. So inspections, depending on the size of the home, where it is, things like that, uh, typically run between four and five hundred dollars. Um, so they can range, but uh, that's usually what they cost. Uh, and then the appraisal. So typically what lenders will do is they'll ask you for a credit card uh, once we get to the process of getting the lending all squared away. And what'll happen is um, the appraisal typically costs between 700 and 750 bucks. Uh, if you don't go through with the purchase of the home, then your card's gonna be charged for that appraisal uh, because the lender's not gonna eat that cost if you choose to back out. However, if you go through with the purchase, then that appraisal cost is typically rolled into your loan. Some lenders have other programs where they may credit you back at closing, that sort of thing. But just know if you go through with the purchase, you're not paying for the appraisal. So with that being said, all things considered, uh, on a $200,000 home, you're looking at coming out of pocket 
between $2,400 and $2,500, which is a lot do more doable for most people, uh, especially first time home buyers. Any questions, concerns, feel free to let us know. Uh, we're always here to help and answer whatever questions you have and have a great day, thanks.